I don't know where you get the numbers because we haven't finished our plans for salvage yet on the Chetco Bar. Um, and as soon as we will, I'd be happy to share them with you. Well, I, um, I, I will say. I have let him answer. Thank, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> and so for me, um, the bulk of the acres that burned this year were on national forest. The bulk of the effort that we put into resources was to keep it off of state protection lands. I think we burned, uh, that resulted in additional acres burning on the national forest that otherwise might not have burned had we been able to focus on suppression just on the national forest to protect those values off the national forest. Um, I can think of specifically the effort that went into when it did come out of the, out of the wilderness area um, around the private timberlands uh, on the Chico Bar Fire, the uh, focus on the Blanket Fire, the focus on the Millie Fire, um, the focus on the uh, Whitewater Fire. Uh, we had a very um, specific plan with our interagency partners to keep that fire off private lands to the extent that we could um, and minimize the acres uh, on state protection and other jurisdiction protections other than federal lands. Um, and so for me, um, get it not to start on the national forest. <laughs> that's, a, that's a trite answer, but um, Senator Barslager was very uh, accurate in indicating that we are going to have fires every year. The fires that we have um, year in, year out um, are highly variable depending on where they start, um, the resources available when they start, and um, you know how successful those resources are. We initial attacked every fire this, in this region. Every one of those large fires that we dealt with had an initial attack that failed. At a 96% 96, uh, 96 of the fires we had, it didn't fail. We were successful in stopping a fire from expanding and damaging uh, large acreages. And so from my standpoint, I think continuing the partnership we have with ODF and our other partners in the state, um, building on that, uh, working for, um, with um, state uh, federal legislators to change the, the fire funding uh, mix on federal lands. Um, we're basically losing capability to prevent um, and treat around communities uh, treating fuels by having to shift more and more of our budget to suppression. Uh, 2.4 million is about a 400, 400 million dollar increase over last year and the year before last. That's not sustainable. Just as the increases in the budget for suppression by ODF uh, is not sustainable. And so for us, coming up with a way to work with local communities to better live with fire, um, the point that uh, Senator Barslager made about, you know, we've always had fire on these landscapes, which is true. What we haven't always had is people living in those landscapes at the degree we do now. That changes our options on what we can do with fire, but it doesn't change what fire is going to do. <laughs> Unless we are able to um, change some weather patterns or change some starts, and I think that goes to um, Representative Witt's point about prevention. You know, 62% of the fires that we had were um, by human caused. This fire season, though, on the on the national forests, that what those large fires weren't man caused. Predominantly, they were lightning fires in an inaccessible areas that we weren't able to successfully initial attack. I don't think that because of the buildup of fuels, we're going to see that change uh, because of the pattern of ownership, the the where those Lightning strikes typically occur in the higher elevation, in areas that are wilderness or roadless that make access difficult. And because of that buildup of fuels, the fire behavior we're seeing is significantly more volatile than the experience that um, Senator Barschlager experienced in the uh, 70s, that I experienced in the 80s and 90s. Um, in, this, in this state, we had large fires predominantly in eastern Oregon in the 80s and 